Right, I'm gonna do this in one take because I don't have that much time. Uh, so forgive the background because this is just an on the fly sort of thing. So you know, last night my son asked me, why do aircraft have round windows? So it comes down to stress. Um, back in the 1950s, there was the uh, de Havilland Comet, uh, first jet airliner, and it was uh, it was a great success until they started falling out of the sky. Nobody could understand why and what was happening. Turned out the square windows were the problem. Now, what happens when an aircraft goes to altitude? Um, they fly it at heights where the air isn't uh, thick enough for humans to be able to breathe. There's not enough oxygen in the air. So to overcome that, they pressurize the fuselage to pump more air into it. And that creates a, um, an environment where people can breathe. And it's usually at like um, 0.8 atmospheres as opposed to the one atmosphere down on the ground which is equivalent to about 10,000 feet, which is, um, you know, which is doable. Um, most people have no issues with that. And modern aircraft like the 787 and the Airbus 350, they, they have a different type of fuselage so they can increase the, um, the, the, uh, the, the pressure a little bit more. So it's more comfortable for you to breathe. But what the issue is, is metal fatigue and the uh, combined with point load of stresses uh, on the fuselage. So what happens is when the aircraft goes up, it inflates. And when it comes down, it deflates and inflates and deflates and inflates and deflates. Cause there's going to be like, uh, like a half a bar or, or, or something like that in pressure difference between the inside of the fuselage and the outside. So when it does that, the air, as the aircraft inflates more or less like a balloon, it puts stresses on the aircraft. And then when it goes down again, it contracts again and up and down. So it does that um, many, many, many times. And the problem with metal, when you when you stress it and unload and stress it and unload it, it creates, you get metal fatigue, which is where the crystals inside the metal start losing their bonds and they start tearing. Um, I'll see if I can demonstrate it with this piece of steel here, which is a little battery terminal thing I found just lying around. So if I start bending it, uh, at the same spot over and over and over and over again, eventually the steel will weaken and it will eventually snap like that. Now, with the Comet, um, they obviously knew about uh, metal fatigue back in the day, but what they didn't realize is the cycles put on the airframe would create stresses. Um, now, okay, up to this point, square windows have been fine because the fuselages hadn't been pressurized by and large. There were a few aircraft out there, um, like the like for instance the B twenty nine bomber had a pressurized fuselage because they were flying at such a high altitude. But the problem was because it was so new, they didn't take into account that. Um, these pressure cycles would have such an effect on the fuselage. So they had nice square windows like they used to have all, all the time, um, leading up to that point. Okay, so doing it in two takes, because it didn't go quite as planned. I got a little bit over enthusiastic and just wrecked the piece of paper. Anyway, same piece of paper. So I'm gonna cut the windows out of. Again, this is also an example of fatigue. When you fold paper, it will create a weak point along the, the fold because you're compromising the, the fibers. Anyway, here comes here's a square window. window and then oval window or round window a 
hopefully this will work because I, as I'm cutting, I'm doing it in little sections, which means that there's going to be a little nicks and corners that could focus stresses as well. So it doesn't take much. Now, I did little put a little nick there, but anyway. So this is our round window, and this is our square window. So what happens is that with a round window, there's nowhere for the stress to focus, although it might focus there and there, because I didn't cut it uh, correctly, and there's a bit there. And But with a square window, you've got all these points here that can load stresses. So if I gently do this, This is the aircraft going up and down, up and down, and the other direction, nothing. Now if I take this square window, there you go. All the stresses load up in those corners and, um, and it tears. So when they tested the Comex fuselage in a big water tank, they, um, they, loaded it, they loaded the pressure and unloaded it and loaded it and unloaded it. And what happened was, is that the fuselage ripped right along the bottom of all the windows like toilet paper. It just came apart like a, like a serrated edge. And that is why aircraft have round windows. Oh, and finally, um, my boy also asked me, but then why do the cockpit windows have square edges and, and, and around the doors? Why are those, those a bit more squared off? It's because they have massive, massive reinforced frames that go around them that will uh, take the take the strain. That's mostly on older aircraft. Modern aircraft like the Airbus 350 and the 787, they have rounded edges around those to deal with those stresses so they can make those structures lighter um, to uh, save weight. So yeah, on these old aircraft like this DC-10 or MD-11, the corners, there would be a massive framework in here that would um, take all the strain of all the, the, the air pressure building up in those corners and, and there. So yeah, that's how they get away with that. Anyway, I hope that's explained what I was showing on my uh, threads post earlier. And uh, I hope uh, that helps explain why aircraft have round windows.